Hello, Algebra 1 CP students. Hopefully, you're having a great day so far. Today, I would like to start showing you the third and final method of solving systems of linear equations that we'll be taking a look at in Algebra 1 CP, and that is solving by elimination. We're still dealing with two equations with two variables, x and y, and trying to solve for that value for x and that value for y that satisfies both equations simultaneously. We did solving by graphing. We did solving by substitution, and now we're going to be solving by elimination. All right. I wanted to give you just a little overview as to what we're trying to do when we do this elimination method, such that it doesn't seem like ooh, it's like like magic almost that it just happens to work out so nicely. I want to show you the the goal. I want to explain to you why this works, and then hopefully you'll be able to implement this to solve systems. We'll take a look at a couple examples today. So the goal, what I'm doing by elimination, is I want to we want to eliminate one of the variables, either x or y, from the system. Okay, We want to eliminate either x or y, whichever one is actually more convenient, depending on the problem, from the system. In order to accomplish that, what we're going to do is we are first going to do the following steps. We're going to uh, rearrange the terms in the equations such that the like variables, and by that I just mean variables that are the same, are lined up. And by lined up, I pretty much just mean they're in order. Right? The x's come first, the y's come second in both equations. Or if you want the y's to come first, you can. But typically, the x's come first followed by the y's equals the constant. Right? Everything's in that standard-looking form. Okay. After we do that, what we want to do, and by the way, this is only if necessary. Sometimes you may have it that you know, your equations are already lined up and you don't have to shuffle things around. We're going to see that in the first uh, example that actually everything is already lined up so we don't have to do anything. Okay. After that, what we want to do is we want to modify the equations uh, by multiplying by a specific value to ensure that the coefficients of one of the variables oops, going off the page a little bit one of the variables match and again, in parentheses, I'm going to say, if necessary, we may find that when we rearrange equations or maybe just given a problem right at the start, the coefficients already match up and we don't have to do any multiplying. We'll see that again in the first example, it's going to be given to us. From then on out, we'll probably have to do a little bit of work to get to that point. But, you know, in that first example, it is going to be given to us. And lastly, what we want to do is we want to add or subtract the equations together and solve for the variable that was not eliminated. So I know that seems like a lot of things, and I know that seems like a lot of words. It's a lot of me describing a process without you actually seeing it. But I wanted to give you the goal ahead of time, just so it doesn't seem like a random sequence of steps, like I said, so it doesn't seem like magic that this happens to be working out. We want to eliminate one of the variables from the system. Because we saw that even with substitution, if we can get two variables, two equations, down to one variable, one equation, well, then we could just solve it like we did back in September, October. 
right? So in order to accomplish that, we're going to rearrange the terms if necessary, such that the like variables are lined up, the x's are on top of each other, the y's are on top of each other, etc. We're then going to modify the equations by multiplying by a specific value if necessary. You may have that those coefficients already line up, like you're going to see in the first example. And then we're going to add or subtract the equations together and solve for the variable that was not eliminated. So let's take a look at how that looks like or how that actually works out, what it looks like in a couple of examples here. Ready? Let's consider this first example. I know it may seem confusing without seeing it. If I had 9x plus 4y is equal to 6, and I also had negative 6x minus 4y is equal to negative 12. Notice when I say the variables having to be lined up, I mean exactly this. If you notice, the x's are together on top of each other. The y's are on top of each other. The constants are on that right side of the equal sign. Everything's in the same order. You don't have x's and y's and constants all jumbled throughout the equation. All right, so that's what I mean by lined up. So luckily, our terms are already lined up here. Now, based on what I just said, what should catch your eye is this in the middle here. Do you see how in this equation, the first equation, we have a positive 4y, and in the second equation, we have a negative 4y. These coefficients match. These are the same. We see 4 and 4, right? One's positive and one's negative, just in this particular case. Okay, so we're good in that the coefficients kind of match each other. We see 4y and 4y. And one thing you may notice to yourself is say, well, hey, if I take this first equation and add this second equation to it, right, literally do this plus this, this plus this, this plus this, wouldn't the y's cancel out, and then I'd be left with just x, the x's equal some value, and I can solve for what the variable is. Isn't that the case? And the answer to that question is yes, that would most certainly be the case if I could take this equation and add that to it. But now you might counter and say, well, Mr. Georgia, it can't be that easy. That seems like it, it's like magic. Like I said, are we allowed to actually just take this equation and add the other equation to it? And my response to that is yes, we are. But the reason why we are is important. So, yes, we are allowed to just take this top equation and add the bottom one to it, almost as if you were taking them and condensing them into one equation, right? Just combining these terms, combining these terms, combining these terms. The reason we're allowed to do it is because this second equation is stating that this quantity is equal to this quantity, meaning that this six, negative 6x six minus 4y and this negative 12 are the same. So if I add this to the left side of the top equation and I add this to the right side of the top equation, it still preserves equality because they're the same quantity. It's just like if I took this side and added 5 and took that side and also added 5. Well, the equation is still balanced. Because we're saying that this quantity is the same as this quantity, adding this to this side of the equation and adding this to this side of the equation, again, preserves that balance. All right. And notice how nice this is when we actually do that. If I add these equations together, we'll get 9x plus negative 6x is 3x. And then 4y plus negative 4y cancels out. And we get 6 plus negative 12 or 6 minus 12 is negative 6. And what we've now done by combining our equations that way is eliminate one of the variables. And so when we say solving by elimination, this is exactly what we're talking about. Combining the equations together will actually eliminate one of the variables. All right. Hopefully that made sense. Now we can just go ahead and solve. Almost just like with substitution, I could say, well, now we're left with the equation of 3x is equal to 6. I can divide by 3 on both, or sorry, 3x is equal to negative 6, divide by 3 on both sides, and we end up with the fact that x is equal to negative 6 divided by 3, negative 2. With that information, if I now know that x is equal to negative 2, we could take that and plug it back in for one of the top equations and figure out what y is equal to. In this case, it doesn't matter, it, it actually in any elimination problem, it doesn't matter which of the equations you plug it into. So just for the sake of, you know, trying to maybe avoid some negatives, let's plug it into the top one. All right. But again, 
you could plug it into whatever one you want. Sometimes you may notice that one equation looks easier than the other, maybe smaller coefficients. And by all means, feel free to choose that equation. So I take x, I plug it back up here. That would mean that 9 times negative 2 plus 4y is equal to 6. And now we just have a little bit of algebra to do. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18 plus 4y is equal to 6. I'd add 18 to both sides to get that 4y is equal to 8, 16 plus 8, or sorry, 6 plus 8 is 24. And then divide both sides by 4, and we'd get here for our solution that y is equal to 6. And so the answer to our system of equations is that x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to 6, which you could represent by the two equations like that, or you could just use an ordered pair of negative 2 comma 6, because that's your x and that's your y. All right. So that last plug-in part is very similar to substitution in that once you find out what one of the variables is equal to, you can use that information to plug it back into your function and figure out what x should be or what the other variable should be. In this case, it was y. All right. Let's take a look at another example, maybe one in which we have to shuffle some terms around. Ready? Consider something like this. How about a problem like this? 7y plus 4x is equal to negative 10. And also 4x plus 2y is equal to negative 20. Okay. What you might notice here right off the bat is that our terms are not lined up. By that I mean they're not really in the same order. The x's and y's are jumbled up in both equations. So typically we like to have x first followed by y. You could put all the y's first and all the x's second if you wanted to, but it's typically proper practice to have everything in alphabetical order. So I'm going to put the kind of switch this term around at the very start to have 4x first and 7y second. But please make sure you do that. If we use our elimination techniques, we can't be mixing variables together. They have to be lined up first. So what I would do at the very start is I'm going to rewrite this entire equation as uh, 4x plus 7y is equal to negative 10. They're both on the same side of the equation, so I can mix, I can uh, shuffle them around like that, no problem. And then just leave the second one the same. Okay. Now our variables are lined up, and you may notice again something that catches your eye is this 4x and that 4x. Okay. But one thing you might think to yourself is, hey, over here when I had 4y and negative 4y, the only reason that canceled out is because they were opposites, right? When I added them together. What if they're exactly the same? If I just added these equations, 4x plus 4x would be 8x. That wouldn't cancel out, right? And you're absolutely right. So instead of adding the equations together, what you can do is right here, subtracting. Because remember, add or subtract the equations together. So if I take these two equations and subtract the second from the first, we would get 4x minus 4x goes away. That's 0x. 7y minus 2y is 5y, 7 minus 2. And negative 10 minus negative 20, be careful with your double negative, that's going to be negative 10 plus 20 is positive 10. And now we just have a simple one-step equation to solve where we can divide both sides by 5. We'd get y is equal to 2. And now that we know that y is equal to 2, we could take that, plug it back into the equation, and figure out what x is equal to. Again, it doesn't matter which equation you elect to plug it into. I'd probably say, hmm, actually, they're pr both pretty similar. But maybe the second one's a little easier because the coefficient's only 2 as opposed to 7. But really, they're both not, not too bad in this case. So I would take this one, plug it right back up here continue my problem over here. I could say to myself now that 4x plus 2y, which we now know y is 2, so 2 times 2 is equal to negative 20, right? It's like a puzzle. We're using that information now to progress, meaning that we get 4x plus 4 is equal to negative 20. And then this just becomes a matter of solving 4x. I would subtract 4 from both sides. We'd get 4x is equal to negative 24. Divide both sides by 4. 
and we would get that x is equal to negative 6. All right, and so the solution to our system of equations here would be negative 6, 2. Or you could leave it as these equations if you'd like. All right, kind of coincidental that it was very similar to what we saw over there. Any questions about that at all? Hopefully it's all sinking in and making sense. But you might think to yourself, well, what if my coefficients don't match up, right? We've, we've seen here that kind of coincidentally, when I've moved my terms around, we get, oh, 4x and 4x, or 4x and negative 4x. What if that's not the case? Well, that's where we have to take this little second step into account, where we have to multiply one of the equations by a specific value to ensure that they match up. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look and find out. Okay, Consider an example kind of like this. If I had, this will be my third example, I had negative 6x minus 8y is equal to negative 10. And I also had negative 2x plus y is equal to negative 7. Okay. First things first, our variables are lined up. The x's are on top of each other. The y's are on top of each other. The constants are on top of each other. So that's great. But what I don't have here is I don't have any matching coefficients. All right. See, 6 doesn't match, 8 doesn't match, nothing matches. However, we can modify one of the equations, namely the bottom equation, to make it match the top. And one of the things we could do, if you notice, is I could multiply the entire equation by 3. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why? That seems kind of random. Why three? The reason is because that would force these coefficients to be the same. Do you see that? If I multiplied everything by three, well, now we'd have a negative 6x here and a negative 6x here. And you'd be like, ooh, well, that's good. Now we can subtract them from each other, right? So pick a number that is going to strategically make one of these coefficients match. All right? Now, you may be thinking to yourself, could I have instead of multiplying everything by 3 to make the x's match up, could I have multiplied everything by 8 in the second equation to make the y's match up? Because we'd get negative 8y and positive 8y. Absolutely. We would still get the same answer in the end. If you did that, you just eliminate y first, solve for x, and then plug in to get y. So yes, the, the short answer is yes. Whatever number you could multiply by such that one of those factors lines up, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. So if you notice, instead of multiplying by 3, that you said to yourself, hey, instead I want to multiply by 8 because that will cancel out, by all means, by all means, you'll get the same answer in the end. All right, but for the sake of example, we'll start with multiplying by 3. That means that the top equation is going to stay the same, negative 6x minus 8y is equal to negative 10. But that bottom equation, we're going to triple it. And we're going to say that's now negative 6x plus 3y is equal to negative 21. All right. And now what we could do is we can subtract the bottom equation from the top equation because it's negative 6x minus negative 6. It's going to be plus 6. So negative 6x plus 6x will be eliminated. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. These guys matching up here. So let's take a look at what that would uh, produce. Negative 6x minus negative 6x would be negative 6 plus 6, which is eliminated, 0x. Negative 8y minus 3y is going to be negative 11y. Be very careful with your negatives. And here, negative 10 minus negative, again, double negative, 21 would be positive 11. That's negative 10 plus 21, which is positive 11. And now it's just a matter of one step equation, divide both sides by negative 11. We would get y is equal to negative 1. We could then take that y is equal to negative 1 and plug it into any of our equations. Personally, I'd look up here and I'd say, ooh, this seemed, before it was tripled, seemed to be a pretty easy equation to roll with. So why don't we choose that one? Again, you could pick whichever one you'd like. I would say here that means negative 2x plus y, which is now negative 1, is equal to negative 7. That means we get negative 2x minus 1 equals negative 7. 
We could add 1 to both sides to try to isolate that x. Gives us negative 2x equals negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 2. And we would get here that x is equal to negative 6 divided by negative 2, positive 3. Okay? And so that means the solution to our system of equations is 3, comma, negative 1. x is 3, y is negative 1. All right. Well, for that makes sense how that's done. I would very much like for you to try. I don't want to like show you another example for the sake of keeping the video somewhat on the brief side. I know we're already at the 20 minute mark, but uh, hopefully that makes sense. I do have one more example to show you and I will give you the answer. I would like you to try it on your own and see if you get this result. We'll start next class by going over it pretty much. Uh, the last problem I'd like you to try on your own is 5x plus 2y is equal to 21 and also negative 2x minus 6y is equal to 2. So try this problem on your own if you can. The solution to this problem is 5 comma negative 2. So x is 5 and y is negative 2. All right. See if you can figure out which of the equations you'd have to modify either the top one or the bottom one and what number you'd have to multiply everything by to make one of these variable pairs match up and then eliminate and try to solve take whatever value you get plug it back into any of the equations and get the other variable all right give it your best effort like i said we'll start next class by going over this problem hopefully it'll make sense and we'll take a look at more examples next time thank you so much for your attention and focus today i hope you have a great rest of your day and best of luck. Take care, everyone.